Hey guys, in this video today, we are going to write a recursive formula for two geometric sequences. First thing, I wanna make sure you're in the right place. So as you're working with sequences, you're going to hear different things. Arithmetic recursive, arithmetic explicit, geometric recursive and geometric explicit. Today in this video, we are on geometric recursive. If you need any of these other ones, guess what? You got it. I have videos for you. I will link a playlist in the corner. Okay. We have some geometric sequences here and I want to figure out the recursive formula for them. The point of the recursive formula is to find more numbers in my sequence. This dot, dot, dot tells me that these sequences continue. They don't just stop with four numbers. They keep going. The recursive formula is going to help me or someone else find more numbers in this sequence. Now, the first thing I want to do is figure out the pattern between these numbers. They're not just randomly listed. There's some sort of pattern here. So when I look at this one, I notice that we are multiplying by negative three each time. You're like, great, now what? There's just a little bit of terminology we need to go over and then it falls together pretty quickly. So when you're working with these, you're gonna see a lot of A's and a lot of N's. The N refers to the place it is in line, basically, the place in the sequence. So N equals one is the first number in the sequence. N equals three is the third number in the sequence and on it goes, right? When you see A with a little number like this, a little subscript, A sub one, that's talking about the value of that number, okay? So A sub one in this case is negative four. You're also gonna see A sub N quite frequently. What that is saying is plug in whatever number you want for N to find that in the sequence. So if I had A sub 100, I'm looking for the 100th term, okay? As we write our formulas, we're going to leave a lot of things as A sub N so people can plug in what they want. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and look back at our sequence. We figured out that we are multiplying by a negative three each time. So if I were in an English class for you English people, if I were looking for the next term, okay, we would call this a sub five, right? If I were looking for this term, what do I do? If someone's asking me, what do I do? Well, if you're in English and they're like, tell me what I do, you would just write it down. You would say, take the number before a sub five and multiply by negative three, right? Your English teacher would be like, A plus, wonderful job. But we don't usually write things out like that in math. We like to use math terms. We like to use equal signs and numbers and things. So how do I say whatever number you want to find, take the number before it and multiply by negative three? Well, let's look at it for a second. If I multiply this by negative three, what do I end up with? I end up with 162. I'm going to write that right here because all I did was continue the pattern. I multiplied by a negative three. But how do I say that in math language? Well, if I write out what I just did, I say to find a sub five, I took the one before it, which in math terms we would call a sub four. And what did I do? I multiplied by a negative three. Beautiful, right? But this is only a formula for if I want to find a sub 5. What if I want to find a sub 10? Well, that's where our formula comes in, and we're going to use n's to help us out. So I'm going to say whatever number you want to find. The math way to say that in this context is a sub n, meaning you plug in whatever place you want to know, plug that in for n. If you want to know the 10th place in this sequence, plug in 10. This, whatever number you want to find, is equal to the number before whatever you want to find. But how do I say that in math language? I say A sub N minus 1. What? Okay. Isn't 4 5 minus 1? Yes. So this means take the one before it. If you want to find the 10th term, 
take the one before it, the ninth turn, 10 minus one, all right? And what do you do? You multiply it by negative three. Oh my heck, that's my recursive formula. Now, in order for this to be helpful for anybody using it, we need to let them know what the first term in our sequence is. So we say a sub one in this sequence is equal to two. All right, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so the thing about recursive formulas is you have to know the term before, right? If I want to know the hundredth term, I have to know the 99th, which is helpful but can get annoying. So if you want to learn the explicit formulas, and that way you can just plug in whatever you want and you don't have to know the one before, I'll link a video in the corner for you. All right, let's look at this one now. This one, we're going down, obviously, but we're not subtracting, we are dividing. So if you look at this, we are dividing by two each time. Now, oftentimes when we are looking at sequences, instead of saying divide, sometimes we like to say we're multiplying by a fraction, which is really the same thing. So I could also say that we're multiplying by one half each time. That would be the same thing, just a different way of saying it. So how would I say in math language, whatever number you want to find, take the one before it, multiply by one half. Well, I say whatever number you want to find, a sub n, is equal to the one before it. In math language, we say a sub n minus one. And what are you going to do? You are going to multiply by one half. Look, there we go. Now, in order for this to be helpful, we need to tell people that the first term in this sequence is 120. Okay, I hope this made sense. If you need to check out those other videos, they're there for you. Thanks.